Hey, Chris Lipe here with The Recording Revolution. Every home studio owner needs to do this. You can stretch your legs like you're running free. When you love someone, you can show the world what it really ought to be. Every studio owner, every mixing engineer needs to walk their room regularly. Yes, even if you have sonar works, even if you shot your room, even if your room is perfectly treated, but especially if it's not, there are going to be different representations of your sound, of your mix, what you're doing in, in every part of your room. You say, why do I need to know what's going on in the corner or standing on a chair or laying on the floor or over there? Because... Your mix position may well be dialed in, and if it's not, I can help you do that. Click the link below and join my free recording course. But the mix position isn't the end-all be-all. You need to understand what kinds of things come out more, what kinds of things disappear more, even on a numbers basis as you walk around your room for multiple reasons. The first is you're not always the only one in the room who has input into what's going on. If you've got people sitting in the back, you better know that back there is a bit more bass heavy right up against that wall. If you've got someone sitting over by the keyboard who's off axis of the primary listening position, you have to know that the center image is quite distorted over here, especially in this room. It's not just that you don't hear the panning quite the same, but the, the center image, what's really prominent in the center, tends to disappear just over here outside the spectrum of the, the primary listening area. Over here, where I have this mic set up close to that glass, there is this sense that you're getting more low to low high mids, like 800, 600 hertz, because there's... There's a little bit of, of reflection off that glass, even though I have that tilted in a certain way. I know this because I've gone around and I've listened and I've made meticulous notes. One of the things that uh, really bit me when I first moved into this room, I was mixing some drums and I didn't feel like I was getting a very good kick sound and the toms were super muddy and... I was A, being with, you know, reference uh, tracks that I really like in my, in my primary listening position. And then I was walking around the room and I noticed that when I was sitting here, things were muddier than they were off axis or even standing on my chair or getting down uh, on my knees. And so I, I got out, uh, you know, I, I started using uh, Sonarworks, uh, which is sort of an RTA thing. And I started making notes of how the frequencies changed as I moved around the room and it confirmed what my ears were hearing and also why I felt like even when I would record vocals right here, things were a bit more muddy. There was a large peak at 122 hertz at the listening position. If I went five feet or four feet this way or four feet this way, it disappeared. If I stood on my chair, it disappeared. If I got down on my knees, it disappeared. But right here, it was extra thick. So I ended up, uh, I used Sonarworks for a while, and then I ended up getting a an outboard piece of equipment uh, by DBX to do the same thing. I, I shot the room and, and got everything right at the listening position. But then... When I started walking around the rest of the room, I realized, oh, you know what? Getting rid of 120, not getting rid of, but dipping 122 hertz at the listening position, it, it imbalances it in other places in the room. I need that for a proper res representation of the kick or lower, richer vocal sounds when, when we're you know, partway back in the studio or over to the sides. So... If you're just concerned about your listening position, but you don't have a mindset for how it's affecting the rest of the room for other people, that's a big deal. Another reason that knowing different parts of your room is so nice and is helpful in your mixing is that you don't always listen to music for recreational purposes in 
an ideal primary listening position. Far from it. If you're sitting in a chair while you've got a, you know, HomePod or Amazon something or other over in the corner. You've, you're listening in your car with road noise where you're off center from the stereo image. You're uh, walking around your studio listening to a song. The list could go on and on and on, right? And so by you going around and knowing, oh, okay, well, let's, let's move to a place in my room where it isn't as bass heavy or where it's more bass heavy or where the vocals or center images tend to pop out a little bit more. By you moving around your room and knowing the differences, you aren't going to have to do near as many trips out to your car or trips over to different stereo systems or different listening environments because you can create different listening environments in your one room. One of the main things I do when I'm working on mixes is I'll, I'll get it to where I, I like a, a section right here in the primary mix position and then I'll play it and I'll walk around just like you saw me doing at the beginning of the video and I'll, I'll make mental notes. Okay, you know, I could balance it a little bit differently, but my mixing is, is very much out of this chair. And finally, the last reason that you should know different pockets and the different way your room or rooms react in different places, whether they're optimized or treated perfectly or not, is this. It's not just about the mix you're listening back to. It could be about tracking. Do you really want to track a bass heavy instrument in a corner where there is bass buildup? Hmm. I don't know. Do you know that there is not bass buildup in the middle of your room? There certainly is in this one. And so if you're recording a bass heavy instrument in the middle of this room, you need to know that in terms of mic placement. Maybe, maybe you don't even want to do that. I don't record bass heavy program material here. I do it in that room. That room, the dimensions are actually better, even though it's a little bit smaller for, you know, like cellos, stand up basses, um, any kick drums, anything like that. It's really interesting. Vocals can, can do the same thing. I don't record vocals singing towards the window. <laughs> uh, because, and you know, that's kind of a common sense thing, right? But I can hear it. I, if I'm getting into it, because I do record vocals facing this way quite a bit, but if I get into it and I, I turn a little bit, I can hear when that window becomes a problem because I know what I'm listening for. I know it's not, oh, I'm working the mic wrong. It's up. Oh, no, I, I turned towards the window for a second. Really, really key. I like to record acoustic guitar in those chairs back there. They're nice and comfy and it's a nice vibe. I can take my, my wireless keyboard back there and start and stop. And what I have to realize though, is there is a, a lower mid, you know, 400 Hertz bump with anything that I record back there. I didn't realize this initially, and now I find it very intriguing. I'm not exactly sure why it's around 400 hertz, but it is closer to the wall, and it probably just has something to do with the way I have my acoustic treatment placed, And but it doesn't really matter why. What matters is I know. And so as I'm miking up my acoustic guitar, I can compensate by putting some EQ on my preamp before it even hits the DAW. So I don't have to do it later and do a nice gradual bell curve around 400 Hertz. And that makes it sound more, more natural. I hope this has been helpful for you and encouraged you to get to know your room and walk your room over a variety of different songs and different program material that you may be recording in it. Again, if you'd like more help with your own recordings, click the link below and join my free recording course. We'll see you for more.